Ready? Okay, so we're going to go over the four types yeah. of breathing. You have quiet inhalation, quiet exhalation, forced inhalation, forced exhalation. Well, we're going to go over quiet because that's the easiest. All right? Yeah. So we have quiet inhalation first. There's only one muscle that contracts in inhalation alone. Okay? That's going to be your diaphragm. diaphragm. Your diaphragm sits right about here and it has a C shape to it. Its natural way to sit is like this. When you inhale, whether it's forced or not, it's going to be forced downward. It has to contract to expand, expand the pleural cavity. All right? So if it said, what is quiet inhalation? Diaphragm contracts. If they say, what muscle group contracts during quiet exhalation? Nothing. Because if only the diaphragm contracted in inhalation, it doesn't need to contract to get back. It's going to be like a rubber band. It's going to want to go back to its resting position. So quiet inhalation, diaphragm contracts down, making this bigger. And then quiet exhalation, it springs back into place. It doesn't need to contract for that. Okay. If the diaphragm was contracting all the time, that would be exhausting. That's why it has to have some sort of method to it, all right? Contract down, spring back up. Yes. Yes. Did you have a question? Yeah, we have on our checklist that external intercostals are involved in normal quiet breathing. Do you want, oh, okay, so that's fine. Then we can just add that because in many classes they don't have any. All right, so if you wanted to remember that external that kind of makes sense too because when you're this is exhalation or it's an inhalation. normal quiet breathing. Quiet so breathing. Inhalation and exhalation. Okay. Diaphragm okay. and external intercostal. In that one, then so it's going to be more associated to quiet inhalation because oh, no. external intercostals are more towards the sides mm -hmm. and it's going to expand the rib cage, all right? Yeah. Because you're trying to force yeah. this cavity to get bigger. So they just generalized it because normal exhalation alone doesn't really do anything. That's kind of like your body going back into resting position, okay? So it's forcing everything up. So yeah, we can add that too. So the diaphragm contracts down, the external intercostals force things out, all right? Expands that rib cage. Yeah. All right, now we have forced, like, thank you for that, by the way, forced inhalation, right it's going to be the same thing. You're going to have your diaphragm contract down, there's going to be five of these, so that's one. Then you're also going to have, let's do a, let's see what moved. We had our pectoralis minor, it helped to pull the shoulders back. That's right here. All right, so pectoralis minor, pull the shoulders back. Okay. Then we have our external intercostals. That sort of widened our ribs. This is a really poor picture, but it's going to be right in this region. So you have internal, external. All right, see that? External right here, internal mm -hmm. right there. External are going to be further out. It's going to expand that rib cage. All right? So that's three muscles. Okay. So next thing we need is my shoulders went up. So that's going to mean that your neck's going to hurt if you do it too much, all right? That's because right here, your sternocleidomastoids are contracting, all right? And does anybody know what that last one is? All right. What's right here? Serratus anterior. Yep, and that's your fifth one. Everything in the upper body for inhalation. You have your diaphragm, mm -hmm. all right? So that's going to be here, your pectoralis minor, mm -hmm. your external intercostals, your sternocleidomastoid, and then this one you can kind of see right here, number 16, that's going to be your serratus anterior, all right? Okay. So that's forced inhalation. Now, forced exhalation also.